Hello, and uh, welcome to Rocks. This is a little television series that we've been producing since 1992, actually. We started off in a basement in Bloomington, Indiana. J and B on the Rocks, just two drunken idiots ranting at the video camera. That's uh, J there on the left. He's the bartender, and I'm B. I'm the editor. So you could say that he mixes the drinks, and I mix the video. I mix the video. Anyway, it's been a long time, actually, since we produced our previous episode. We usually try to crank these out on a fairly regular basis, but uh, since episode number 95, it's been well over a year. And, um, well, I guess I should start this episode 96 off by actually calling Jay. He's in Missoula, Montana. I'm here in New Orleans, so making the show is just a little bit complicated. I'm calling him on my cell phone right now. And hopefully, he'll answer. It's ringing. It's still ringing. Um, hello? Hey, Jay, it's B. Hey, how's it going, man? Well, uh, I'm all right. Uh, I was wondering how you are today. I'm actually doing okay. I'm just uh, juggling a lot of technology this afternoon. You know, I got this video camera in one hand. I'm actually managing it. And, uh, and then this headset telephone thing over here so I can talk to you. And then, of course, I've got another little arm load here that's uh, made everything a little more complicated. Actually, I should probably explain for the benefit of our viewers that because of our high-tech setup, you know, uh, with handheld camcorders and um, cell phones, we can't really see each other. So I have no idea what you're really doing right. or even um, where you are. I mean, um, I know you're in Missoula, Montana. Presumably. Yeah, I'm kind of walking down the alley behind our house for no particular reason. And actually, it's really windy. And so, you know, yeah. it might not be actually ideal audio circumstances for this but uh in that case i'm going to walk down the alley beside our house okay of sorts what's Just the weather to... like there it's uh sunny in mid 70s <laughs> yeah there's snow here that's what i thought yeah. yeah just before i rang you up i was actually explaining that it's been over a year since our last episode of this television program episode uh, number 95 was about the, the recovery or the lack of recovery from Hurricane Katrina. Every day, we see good things and bad things. And it's hard to say where it's all headed. If it's headed in the right direction or the wrong direction overall you know, here in New Orleans. That's absolutely true. And actually, you know, a lot has happened in that year. Um, I'm kind of carrying part of that. This, this isn't like just some kind of prop in my arms. This is uh, Julian. You wanna say hi, Julian? Hi, Julian. Perhaps we should mention, I, I've never really met Julian in the flesh. I've right. only seen pictures because, you know, you're so far away. Yeah, it's kind of one of the sad ironies of our televisual activities these days is that uh, we don't see much of each other except on yeah. television. Well, obviously you have um, been busy, but the main reason that, uh, that we kind of stopped in our tracks there was that this, this show has always been about our lives and kind of what's going on in our lives. And something happened in my life uh, January 4th, 2007. My, my friend Helen Hill was murdered in her home um, on that day, in the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. Her, her husband was shot, her uh, little boy was unharmed, but you know, it was, a, it was a close thing. Nobody really knows exactly what was happening or, or you know, what, what that was all about except that Helen's gone now. And um, I knew when we made the next episode of Rocks, we would have to kind of address that in some way. Now, you've never actually met Helen. I had but, you kind uh, of but again, oddly enough, I'd seen her on television. Right, you kind of remember her from uh, episode number 90 of this show. Uh, she and, and her husband and their pig, their, their pig Rosie, graciously appeared and cooked us a nice vegan lunch. Yeah, which was uh, pretty cool. So maybe we should show just a little snippet. Yeah, absolutely. Of, of Helen from that uh, from that episode number ninety. So Helen, yeah, I would yeah. Tell me, how long have you been on the Atkins diet? Oh, I never been on the Atkins diet. <laughs> never. No, I'm even joking. We, you know, I heard that orange juice sales have dropped 
Um, orange juice is kind of in trouble because the sales have dropped, all because of the Atkins diet. No, I, I think the Atkins diet is a bad idea. Yeah, I totally remember her, and I remember that whole segment. It actually kind of brought the whole thing together for me because, uh, you know, otherwise it was just this whole episode about eating meat. And, and yeah. ironically, a, t a diet that uh, I'd given up on by the time that episode even aired. So The, th the thing about Helen is that um, she was a, a filmmaker, uh, and I always wanted to collaborate more with her. You know, doing this TV show, I thought we could do some cool things together, but the, that little vegan lunch thing was about the only thing that we had ever done uh, together. And now we'll never have the opportunity to anymore. And uh, it's, just, it's just very sad. In fact, um, her murder was actually part of a wave of violence that kind of overtook the city right around the turn of the new year, 2006, 2007. She and one other uh, person, Daenerys Shavers, the uh, snare drummer with the Hot 8 Brass Band, two very high profile murders that really just led to an outpouring of, of citizen outrage. There was a march on City Hall where something like 5,000 people marched on City Hall, which uh, you know, is the biggest uh, protest of that kind I think that's ever happened in the city of New Orleans, certainly. Strangely enough, by a, a weird set of coincidences, I ended up speaking at that rally. So we should uh, play just a, a little clip of that speech now. Yeah, totally. personally if they were close friends of mine and the truth is that they weren't I knew them as members of the community and neighbors but it wasn't you know a personal friend of any of them and yet that doesn't matter because you can see how it's affecting all of us I'm either gonna stay here and fight this or uh, get to the point where we're gonna leave I think the next March you might see is right out of the city and we can't let that happen I think drug dealers are raising a whole generation of people I don't think that there's enough positive role models in the city of New Orleans anymore. Mostly I'm a bike rider in this town and I've stopped riding my bike to work and back, uh, especially after dark. Uh, One of my neighbors in the block just below mine was shot and killed last Friday morning, a uh, single mother of two. I don't feel uh, that the city is really moving forward in a way that's productive for the citizens. Well, the missiles I have for the mayor is I just hope that he can uh, change it around real fast, you know, and starting today, <laughs> that he can make a difference today. I work in the city, I'm a taxi cab driver. So, of course, we had a killing, a uh, taxi cab driver got murdered last week. A couple of nights ago, I had uh, one of my first cousins got killed. The trailer home, you know what I mean? We're getting ready to uh, have services for him tomorrow. Our policemen need to open up their eyes and begin to observe what's going on in the communities. I had a, a, someone I knew had an accident, a hit and run accident, and I chased the guy down to get the number. I stopped three police cars. None of them were willing to address the issue at that very time. We have come today from downtown, uptown, back of town, Bucktown, out front of town, across town, and some even from out of town. Someone has to care! To quote our mayor, I am pissed! For a while, and that's why we're here. Fear keeps you in your house, 
but anger drives you into the streets. But there's another feeling. It's not just anger. There's another feeling that doesn't get talked about as much, and that's shame. I think we all feel a deep sense of shame, or we should, because this murderous, violent society is our society. How can we be proud of the good things in our society if we do not take responsibility for the bad? our anger is the perception that our leaders do not share our fear and our sense of shame. And so today I want to say, shame on you, Mayor Nagan, Superintendent Riley, District Attorney Jordan. You have really let us down. You see all the young black people right here? We preserve New Orleans history and music all over the world. Not all of us is murderers. All I know is citizens of New Orleans. And if you ain't gonna be a citizen of New Orleans, get the hell away from us. What hurts me the most is the fact that all the positive roles that my brother played in this city, in the recovery after Katrina, and the musical culture that he loved so much, he still wasn't exempt to the foolishness and the violence that's going on today. My fellow citizens, I'm taking a stand right now. I ask that you stand with me. Me and my family, we are taking a stand right now. I ask that you not let the death of my brother, Mrs. Helen Hill, and all the rest of my New Orleans citizens go in vain. We have children. We need to bring our children up the way they should be brought up. The school system failed a long time ago. The hue and color of this crowd is absolutely amazing. Blacks and whites together is what Martin Luther King preached. Or not. This is not about our mayor or our police chief. This is about you and me and what we do for our children and our community. To the African-American community, you got to step up and call the crime in and quit calling. To my Caucasian community and all other youth, when you see any child in need, you got to step up to the plate like it's your child. We're starting a moment of silence right now, and we're going to walk out the way we walked in. Together as a community, sharing our voices and our concerns. We're gonna fall silent. So it's, it's kind of odd that um, we've been producing this show f since 1992, and we've tried to really cover you know, most of the stuff that's going on in our lives in the show, and yet death hasn't really been a big part of that. I guess we've just you know, had um, a run of, of years in which um, people have been happy and healthy and, and staying alive. Yeah, we've cool, been fortunate that it, way. It, it doesn't go on forever because uh, death of obviously is inevitable. Yeah. One of those people actually who passed away, um, he, he's, uh, it, it's interesting because he didn't show up in, an, in a lot of episodes of Rocks, and yet he was one of the most integral people to what uh, happened, especially over the latter um, part of the early years of Rocks. Um, he was kind of our business manager who kept us on task and made us show up to meetings and made us get stuff done. His name was Jeff Hamlin. Um, we do, uh, he did appear at least once in uh, one of the more notorious episodes of Rocks, J&B Get Baked. That's right. Uh, 
Um, well, you know, it's, it's one of the strange things. It's, it's probably uh, 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 good for the poll, but there's just too many people who uh, are too powerful that uh, don't have to have them. So. Yeah, that's, that's Jeff right there. And uh, Jeff was a really good friend while we lived in Bloomington. I think we both uh, kind of lost touch with him when when we left Bloomington and I moved to Missoula and you moved to New Orleans B and uh, hadn't heard from him for a while and then got an email from uh, his business partner in One World Enterprises saying that he had passed away. So that was a, yeah. a big shock. Yeah, yes indeed. And uh, also, uh, I guess, you know, death isn't always uh, swift in its in its arrival. Yeah. So, uh, Perhaps uh, you should tell us about uh, uh, what's going on with your dad. Well, yeah, about the time actually that, uh, that well, soon after Helen was murdered, um, I was in Los Angeles uh, for a professional conference and Day was home um, pregnant with Jules and uh, she, um, she called me and, and uh, told me that we needed to talk because there was something really serious going on and I didn't know what she was talking about. And um, finally, uh, we got, got a chance to talk in the afternoon one, one day, and um, she told me that my dad had stage four stomach cancer. Um, and uh, this was, I mean, it wasn't really a shock. He'd been losing weight and having stomach problems for some time, um, but it was the worst possible prognosis. So, so uh, while we were there in Texas, actually, my dad went to his first chemo treatment, and, uh, and um, we videotaped that, my brother and I, and uh, so we'll show you a little bit of that. All right. Let's, let's check in some animals at the doctor's office. They're going to check on some animals at the doctor's office? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do then. Yeah. Would you like to explain what's up? Well, uh, this is my father's first chemo treatment. So we're all going to see how that sort of thing goes down. Ah. <laughs> you got your own little nook. Yeah. 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 We got directed said this would be a good place to start with. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no doubt. How's it going? All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We're just kind of hanging out and chilling and it's all So does good. that like clamp down on your finger until it hurts? Yeah. Ow, ow, ow. No. Blood alcohol. It what? Blood alcohol. Blood alcohol. Blood alcohol. Blood alcohol. Blood alcohol. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was wondering if they were running any like, uh, you know, bourbon through this. Well, uh, I don't think it's that's exactly good. Yeah, that's clear. close. Or gin. Yeah. Uh, that's the first of the big drugs. Which one? That one. This one? Or well, this one? No. This that one. one. That one. Oh yes. Yeah. See, it's actually got a, a prescription chloride. on it. Taxol. And taxol. Then get, yeah, taxol. And if they'll mix it with bourbon, it would be yeah, pretty exactly. good. And so we're just kind of hanging out back here. And yeah. This is cool. It can do your temperature in such a fast time. Yeah. You want to say hello to Calpurnia? Sure. Okay. Oh, there's Calpurnia. There he is. There's Calpurnia. It's groovy. Uh, I got the feeling the first first one is probably not going to be as bad you know you just won't notice yeah. so much so. well let's see here we're going to do a little experiment okay hmm no it yeah, does that's not it's anything? not coming out not yet so, yeah. not yet Good. Yeah. well um i'm uh, uh as everybody knows or not everybody knows a lot of people don't know i'm battling uh, a little bit of stomach cancer um it's stage four which is not good that means it's spread throughout your uh, stomach cavity and I've had it for over a year now which is good that I've survived that long and I'm actually feeling very good um, hopefully things will continue to be good like this and we should note that it takes it's probably going to take a little while to you know finish this episode uh, after we shoot all this video so um, who knows yeah uh, where things might stand by the time this airs yeah yeah exactly uh, if we get any late breaking news, I can insert it, yeah. you know, via a graphic on the screen. Yeah. So you know, so far, my dad is is doing okay as of now, as of the time we're taping this, um, which is in March of 2008. Uh, who knows what'll happen? Um, it's anything's possible with this with this disease. Unfortunately, 
uh, it seems like when it grows, it grows fast. And so, you know, so far so good. We've got our fingers crossed, but I think everybody's being realistic about what this really means for him. So I'm not afraid. I mean, I've had a good life. Uh, I'm doing good, and uh, I hope to continue to do good. But uh, uh, this kind of cancer is probably, it's going to get me at some time. But for now, I'm pretty healthy. I'm feeling good, and, and that's good, good enough for me. Well, do we want to drink a toast to these fine folks? Yeah, you know, I think I do, actually. And um, I have over here behind me a liquor cabinet. I actually, in the past year, have uh, for the first time gotten my own liquor cabinet. And uh, wow. as you can see, it's actually kind of stocked with stuff. I'm going to take a swig of this stuff. It's the Dalmore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scotch whiskey. This came from a, a special friend. Maybe you can explain that, B. When news came of that little guy's birth, I wondered what could I possibly send, you know, as a gift. We used to always ask people, you know, to send us a bottle of J and B Rock, a bottle of J and B Scotch. I should say that was our uh, fondest wish was to get a bottle of that, but I knew that that wasn't good enough. So I thought I'd class it up a little and send a single malt. Yeah, well, it's it's fine and classy. It goes down smooth, and uh, Jules is climbing all the way over me to get to the bottle right now, and making sucking noises with his mouth. If I was in Missoula, I would join you. But of course, I'm stuck here in New Orleans, which is in a dry county. A lot of people don't realize that. So drinking is not allowed here. Oh, goodness. I'm getting a little uh, tingle in my ear. I think it might be signaling that my battery is running down. Nice. Yeah. So you had mentioned that you would be yeah. uh, cremated. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, that was originally Mom's idea. Uh, she was the one that said she wanted to be cremated. And uh, the more I thought about it, I thought, I don't go out to the cemetery to see mom or my sister or just recently dad. Uh, I just, it's just not something that I did. All right, so this is the technology, the level of technology we're dealing with. My little yeah. fancy earpiece is out of battery, so, so now I've just got to hold the phone up to my... Up to, up to my face like some kind of 20th century person. Yeah. But we were talking about Julian. Yeah, well, you know... And Julian's birth. Absolutely. You know, the all, all of this uh, this kind of heavy stuff that we've had about death so far, um, well, it's, uh, it's enough to drive a fella to drink. And um, I thought that I would reach into this liquor cabinet here and uh, pull out something to drink. But in any event, <laughs> I'm going to have a, a swig of port in honor of my father. And uh, then... I thought we'd share with you some uh, some video from uh, Jules's pre-birth and birth. We've got uh, actually the ultrasound, which was the first kind of tangible thing that uh, indicated that you know this wasn't just really bad stomach cramps or something going on. Dad, love you. What's up? Oh, stop. You can tell the camera what's up. Apparently it's my job to tell you that we're going for an ultrasound. Our first one. How's that feel? Cold. <laughs> it's not. It's not cold? No, no, it's cool. Oh, there you go. This is the top of the head. The big circle there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then right here is a line that divides the brain into two halves. Uh -huh. This is a baby's cerebellum, the back of the brain right there. Mm -hmm. So we measure the head, the abdomen, and the femur so we can tell how old the baby is. Uh -huh. Well, big heads do run in the family. Right? <laughs> no. There's see the heart there. And then you can uh -huh. see the baby's face right there. Do you see that? Oh, uh, yeah. little eyes. Yep, see the lenses mm -hmm. in the eyes? Mm -hmm. Where? Right there. Right there. There's a little okay. lens, that little circle. Kind of scary looking. I know. Those always are because there's not a whole lot of meat on their bones yeah. right now. There's an arm. Oh, there's an arm. A little hand. See how that little hand sticking up? Little boy? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> See it right in there? What's up, Pat? I said, Julian, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back and forth on boy girl things? Well, we had a name picked out if it was a boy and. And not if it was a girl. girl. 
What's going on? I'm going to be decorated. Have you joined the military? Is that the deal? Or? Not, not quite. Not a Medal of Honor sort of decoration. <laughs> uh -huh. Hi, I'm Tracy Top. We're doing henna painting on the belly today. Today's the, the due date. Today? Yes. But I haven't done prepared anything. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> Goodness, well, you stay in there for another couple of days, okay? So that I can at least clean the house. Putting the dishes away. I see that you um, still haven't had a baby. No. No, I, I, I haven't done that yet. Gotta get around to it one of these days. I've been doing a lot of this lately. Just this. Hanging out. Can't really even concentrate on TV. It's a waiting period. Learning to live with uncertainty. I thought that was a great catchphrase for my life up to April 12th. Now it's really intensified. So we're just hanging out. We're just kind of hanging out. out. Waiting. It doesn't make for real quality television. So you might want to check this out instead. What's going on there? It's a belly. It's big. We've been trying all sorts of things to try to get this baby to show up. Let's see, we've tried sex which was fun, but didn't do anything. We've tried hikes, multiple walks and hikes. We've tried some kind of tincture of black cohosh, which uh, is interesting to me because uh, I was in a band that um, recorded a song called Black Cohosh, which here's a little bit of that right now. Okay, anyway, so what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try a little bit of my personal remedy. You know, I am Jay, your bartender, and so, I'm gonna try the magic of spirits. This, in this case, uh, Aries Merlot. We're just a day away from the uh, the cutoff from um, him not being an Aries anymore. And so what we're hoping is that this will drag that baby out of there, um, you know, get him out here so that he can have a drink with his pop. <laughs> Wait, no. As uh, regular viewers of this um, ridiculous program are aware, I normally mix drinks on this show. I don't normally do things like wine and beer and whatnot. However, um, I thought that this was appropriate because I've been whining a lot, so to speak, for the past week or so. Um, the baby was due a week ago, uh, a week, well, six days ago. And so, um, you know, at this point, we're just kind of waiting around. And uh, it's been rather frustrating. So. Uh, what I'm going to do here is pour some of this, this Aries Merlot, into this glass. You notice that I have sterling technique, despite my lack of experience. Um, and, uh, and drink a toast, an invitation, as it were, to Julian to show up. It's time, buddy. Come on. Maybe I should make him hurry. Guzzle it. My. <sighs> Come on! It's time! Don't yell. It's uh, Saturday night, the 21st of April, and we went to the symphony tonight, and um, in about the middle of the Shostakovich Fifth Symphony, um, Daylin started squeezing my hand and it seems that she is now kind of having fairly regular contractions, which probably means that this baby is on the way. What's that? It might. It might mean that? It might. Could it be just bad gas, you think, from the Shostakovich? It could be, yeah, a bad reaction. Yeah, ever since, uh, this became kind of semi-evident. Um, we've been in a cleaning frenzy, which probably isn't the most appropriate way to relax and just get into this idea of day being in labor. On la I guess it's labor day, isn't it? <laughs> so I think it's time to calm down and just get into this groove. Maybe some music would help.
Right. Yes. In fact, I should warn you that uh, this videotaping business may end at, uh, you know, kind of the climactic moment that you've been waiting for, the birth of this baby. You know, Day may grab the video camera and throw it out the window for all I know. Well, there you have it. You know, I don't think we, um, I don't think we even mentioned that this is actually the 96th episode of Rocks, and uh, we're calling it Life and Death on the Rocks because, with um, along with these departures, we've also had some arrivals like Julian. It seems to be all part of one big cosmic cycle. Uh, once Julian was born, it was more possible to go forward with making this show that it just wouldn't be about how Helen had died and. Jeff had died and your dad's got terminal cancer, but that it would also be about um, birth and renewal. Yeah, totally. You know, uh, and and I have to say, you know, it's th th there's been as much great stuff going on this year um, as there has been terrible stuff. It's funny how those things go hand in hand sometimes. Exactly, yeah. So um, here's a little more of that great stuff. Like I say, I've had a, I've had a good life. Um, I feel feel good about that. I don't feel like there's things that I'm, that I really miss out on that I haven't done. It's tempting too. Hello there, Miss Lily. Hi, How are you? Poppy's talking about you. You're awful big. You're an awful big girl there. Um, that's kind of the things that we enjoy doing. We enjoy having Lily here and. Uh, but we're going up uh, next month for Julian's first birthday, so we're excited about that, and I hope to be around for him. It'd be nice if I'm around for him long enough for him to remember me. I don't know that, you know, that's going to happen, but I hope it will. Uh, I'd say now Lily's four, so uh, she's probably to the age where she's going to remember me, which I think is good. Um, and I hope that uh, I'd love to think that I could get to the point where Julian would too, but you just don't know. That well, that brings us to the, um, the to our vocabulary word for this episode. Oh yeah, yeah. You you had a good one there. Preeclampsia, which is a it's a good vocabulary word for one thing because it's long and uh, hard to pronounce, and therefore it's impressive if you can break it out and um, act like you know something about it. it. It's a bad thing that can happen. Uh, to a pregnant woman, hypertension, uh, and it, it can actually be harmful to the fetus, can be harmful to the mother. Not very fun, preeclampsia. So we don't want to make light of it by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But on the other hand, when I was you know, doing research on pregnancy and all the things that you can worry about, I um, discovered that there's some recent scientific evidence that indicates uh, a surprising preventative for preeclampsia, which is the ingestion of the father's semen orally. Nice! So, so, so this is I scientifically just, proven? Well, I, I think that there's just scientific evidence that bears out that this might help. And uh, I think the theory is something along the lines of that preeclampsia might be caused by the mother's body rejecting the fetus a little as a, a foreign body. The theory is that the father's genetic material in, in the semen, by ingesting that, it can help get the mother's body used to this foreign body, if, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. It just sounded like the kind of thing that more people should know about. Yeah, totally. Have you tested this theory at all? More well, importantly, uh, have you shot any video? <laughs> That would require a pregnant woman. Oh, oh, and of course there aren't any of those in your life. No. No. But um, that does lead us to the next item uh, on our agenda for this show. Which would be what? Well, that um, we did have a pregnant woman in the house uh, just recently. Uh, my wife, in fact. Uh, in fact, we had thought when we were shooting this, I had thought that uh, we, we could save for the, for the end of this little show, that we would say, oh, and guess what? Christy's pregnant. You know, that we would shoot this just when she was like at nine months, about ready to pop, as they say. She could talk a little bit about what it's like to be pregnant or something. But, you know, life has a way of sneaking up on you sometimes. <laughs> well, it was one month ago today, actually. We uh, woke up about 3.30 a.m. and Christy had discovered her, her water had broken. Her first 
thing was uh, to get on the computer and type up lesson plans for her substitute because <laughs> she's a public school teacher and she's very dedicated. Yeah. We ran off to the hospital and the next thing you know, we've got a little baby girl here. So um, I'm going to venture inside and see if we can't um, capture them. I think she's in there watching Judge Judy or something. So uh, hold <laughs> That's on. important stuff for a child to, to learn. But look who's here in this crib. That's Persephone. Wow. So and she is one one month old today. Wow. Anytime that people find out that I have a uh, a uh, a new daughter, they ask, "Oh, oh she is going to be a spoiled little princess?" And I say, "No." She's not a princess. She's a goddess. Oh, nice. So people ask you, like, questions about fatherhood and... They don't ask questions so much as they make comments. Ah. And, of course, the favorite comment that everybody seems to have is, is that your life is going to change forever. Yeah, I know Has that one. Has anybody said that to you? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, pretty much the most common thing that I heard from anybody. It seemed like it came from all quarters. Your life is going to change forever. 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 Hey man, your life is really going to change forever. Indeed. Well, perhaps that might be our theme for our next episode, Rocks number 97. Yeah. Your life is going to change forever. Life is changing forever. You have things like this sitting around the house, um, and things like the this running around the house. What are you talking about, Jules? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, you know, this, this past year has been amazing. I mean, I, you, know, you know, one of the things that I had so little perspective on before he came along was how much can happen in a course of a few days. You know, he's gone through entire phases of his life in less than a week. Little habits that he starts and then stops. And I don't think I knew how to smile before I had Julian. And I know that might even sound a little bit cheesy, but uh, you know, I've always been kind of a cynical person, um, given to uh, being a little bit jaded about everything. And, uh, this guy just makes me happy. Well, that's a nice note to end up on. So uh, I guess uh, to our recent dear departed, we should say goodbye. And to our new arrivals, we should say hello. And to uh, everybody yep. who's you know, watching this TV show, we should probably say goodbye as well. But, you know, um, more au revoir, because we'll see you again um, next yeah. time. Because, uh, you know, this, this series isn't over yet, um, thankfully. It's only just beginning, perhaps. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Good talking to you. unattended because I've got to get stuff done. Um, oops. Raising a child, the delicate balance between guilt, guilt and more guilt. I can't believe you're feeding her cat food. Look, it's cheap, man. Thank you.